Hi there, friends. My name is Yusuf from ClientSide.dev, and today I want to present an interview problem for you guys that I think is really great, and it's also a common one amongst top companies for front-end developers. So head on over to ClientSide.dev slash problem slash use dash poll uh, to follow along. I'll include a link in the description, but to get to it, you can just click pull, uh, hooks and then click that use uh, poll hook there. So. Let's go over this prompt together uh, just so you have a lot more of that same background. So we're going to be creating a custom React hook that allows us to pull a specific URL um, using a custom fetcher that we provide to it. So this is the solution preview. This is what we'll be building. As you can see, it starts off by polling for data. This is just a random number uh, generating API and we can stop it. And then we can also manually trigger uh, new data to be coming in, right? And to see how this is actually being used, you can go to app.tsx and see that consumption here. And it might give you a better idea of what you're building. You can also go to the actual test file that your code will be tested against and uh, check that out. So right now the tests will be failing. This is probably going to time out because it's looking, yeah, exactly. It's looking for, um, it's, it's waiting for that fetching to happen. And obviously it's not happening. We're just returning this empty um, values, right? But anyways, let's get back to the problem at hand. So we are building a polling mechanism. And generally, this is a very common practice in client side development uh, and web development because you might have a long lasting task that you don't necessarily want to block everything for um, while it processes, right? So, for example, in the past, I've had to use this when um, we had a video transcription job that had to run on the back end. And sometimes it would take several minutes for it to process a whole video and then get that transcription for us so that we can display it to the user. And so we created a polling mechanism. So let's actually jump into this. Um, so initially, what we're going to want to do is set up this state. So we have that data, the error, and then we also have that running state, right? So let's say data set data is equal to use state, and then we'll give it a null value. And this data is actually going to have a type of T, which is a generic TypeScript type. As you can see, this promise is also of type T. And that allows us to strictly type these so that once a user consumes our custom hook, anything that they pass into it as a fetcher, uh, the data that they get back out will also still have that correct data type. Um, let's also create that error. And this is going to have a generic type of E, uh, which is denoted up here. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and actually use this. So this trigger function, let's go ahead and create that, right? This doesn't take anything in, but what it does is it's actually going to create, um, I guess it's actually going to go ahead and set the data by calling that fetcher, right? So we can say um, fetcher with that URL and then Right, and then uh, we get some data, and we want to set that data to that to that variable. And if we have an error, we want to catch that error and do something with it. And in our case, we're just going to set this variable to that er error. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's actually go ahead and add these here. And honestly. Well, you don't even have to actually do what I'm doing here, right? Since these actually share the same keywords, um, we can actually just shorthand it like that. Really cool little trick. Okay, cool. This is working. Now, one key thing here is whenever you have a function that is consuming 
um, some external variables that are passed into it, right? So our custom hook takes this URL and this fetcher. We actually want to wrap this in what's called a use callback hook, right? And this is going to allow us to not update this function every time. Uh, we don't want to re-render the component every every time that um, there's a cycle, right? A, a life cycle of the component. Rather, we only want to do it whenever any of the things that we're consuming change. So we're consuming the fetcher and the URL. So let's toss those in here. And that'll just make sure that this trigger doesn't cause re-renders of our components unnecessarily. Okay, cool. Next, we have the start and the stop and also the running state. So let's actually create uh, is running set is running and initially uh, if we look at our tests it says should start in the running state so let's make sure that that is true okay now that we've got that trigger function working correctly hopefully um, and we can test that by just running it like that Let's go ahead and actually get that interval, that, that meat of this problem uh, to actually work for us. So to create an interval, we would use the use effect hook so that we can wrap into the initial load of the component as well as if specific variables change. And what I mean by specific variables is this is running variable, right? If that changes, then we want to make sure that we either start or stop this, um, this polling from happening, okay? And to do that, let's actually create an interval ID variable. And this is going to store the ID of the interval, um, the ID that is returned from set interval, the built in. So let me just show you. So if we're running, right, then we want to say interval ID is equal to set interval. And then here, set interval takes a callback function. So in this case, the function to be called, which is trigger and then the time at which it should actually call that function, which is going to be that refresh interval. Right? Okay. Cool. That works. But as you can see, it's always running. Um, we also want to clean this up. So whenever our component unmounts, we actually want to make sure that, well, we remove this interval from uh, from the context so that it doesn't keep running and causing a memory leak. And to do that, it's very simple. We can just say clear interval and then give it that interval ID. Now, um, if we are actually going to, so let's actually make this uh, consume it by setting that is running state from here and then also creating these stop and start functions. And so to set those, we can say const start is equal to a new arrow function. And it's just going to set that is running to true. And then stop is going to set that is, is running to false. Pretty straightforward. And this isn't going to work because we're actually missing some um, other logic here. So let's make sure, first of all, that we actually have an interval ID that we can call this with, right? We are using TypeScript here. Um, the next thing that we want to do is actually make sure that these this dependency array use it, has everything that we're using within our function. Now. I think we have a bug on the platform, so I'm going to refresh this and click stop. It's not stopping because we're not actually passing that method. Let's go ahead and pass those out. And now we should be able to stop. Whew, a little hectic there when you see those numbers going and you can't get it to stop, right? Um, and let's make sure that the trigger is still working. Cool. That looks like it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So to wrap up that uh, interval, right, let's make sure that this logic is correct. So if we are running, then we want to 
set that interval ID. Else, if we're not running, we actually want to clear that interval, right? Uh, and this is different than this return cleanup. So this return statement says, if this, if, this, if this component isn't visible on the screen anymore, or it's been detached from the view, then we want to make sure that it doesn't cause a memory leak. It doesn't create this interval that's running in the background, taking up memory. This else statement, on the other hand, is saying, if we're not running, then make sure that you clear that interval so that it doesn't keep going. Okay, so there we go. And let's just make sure that our tests pass. And this is gonna to go to our test server and voila, there you go. You get this little celebration to say that we actually got all of the test cases to pass. Good job, I hope you liked this problem. Um, for more of this type of content, please subscribe and also go to clientside.dev and try out the other free problems. They're really useful if you're looking to up your skills as a front-end developer or if you're studying for an upcoming interview because all the problems are from real interviews. Good luck and I wish you the best. Bye-bye.